Leah Chang, and this is Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. While Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month is traditionally celebrated in the month of May to recognize the contributions, vibrant cultures, and rich heritage of Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders have made to our nation, as a sixth generation American of Chinese descent, I like to celebrate it every day of the year. Today, I'm chatting with my friend, Eddie Lee, who made his Broadway debut in 2017 as an ensemble swing in the hit Broadway musical, Hamilton, which broke new ground by casting actors of color in most major roles to highlight America's diversity, immigrants' challenges, and what's behind the American dream. After two years of working with the company as a swing and covering various roles, Eddie became an emergency cover for Alexander Hamilton. A native of East Lansing, Michigan, Eddie studied kinesiology for his undergrad before pivoting to pursue his dreams of performing. Eddie is the first Asian American male ensemble member to join the Broadway company and is the first Chinese American to play Alexander Hamilton on Broadway. Eddie is an actor, dancer, singer, and animation voiceover artist and can be seen in Lin-Manuel Miranda's directorial film debut Tick, Tick, Boom on Netflix and ABC's Big Sky. Last week, I got to witness Eddie's star turn as Alexander Hamilton, which marked his sixth time portraying the role. Welcome to Backstage Pass, Eddie. Thank you so much, Thea. Thank you for having oh, me. I'm so <laughs> thrilled that <laughs> you were here. And I, it was, it was such a thrill to see you star as Alexander Hamilton. Thank you. <laughs> what, what does it feel like to play so many different roles and then get to lead the company? Um, it's, it's crazy. Uh, uh, it's my first time swinging. Uh, it's my, uh, as you said, my, my uh, Broadway debut. Um, but so, I guess swinging, it's so interesting because I have different pieces in my brain and in my body of each part. Um, so I almost look at it as like a puzzle piece. And um, being Alexander Hamilton was like another puzzle piece to me and it, it's my own only my sixth time and it's it's funny because um i need the reminder sometimes that i've actually led a broadway show as opposed to uh, me just inserting as another piece to the whole show um or the show as a whole mm -hmm. so what does it feel like to be in a cast that reflects the world in which we live in it's an incredible feeling um it's something that uh, growing up, I guess I used to always look at theater that way, or in that lens. Um, you sing whatever songs and you can act in whatever role. Uh, and it wasn't until I moved to New York that I kind of realized the box that um, we're all put in. Uh, and so I think it's a refreshing, um, a refreshing, hopefully, turn for the industry that uh, that we can all be. I, in whatever role, in whatever capacity, it doesn't have to be by our look or our size or anything like that. And so it's kind of like a utopia in mm -hmm. a way. And I'm, uh, it's incredible to be a well, part of. Yeah, I, I would think <laughs> it'd be very exciting to be part <laughs> of it. Now, I got to watch the reaction of Asian American fans as you popped through the stage door <laughs> and they were clamoring for your autographs. What did that feel like? Uh, it, it still feels weird <laughs> in a way. Um, I, I, I'm not, I guess, uh, one to feel like, oh, it's me, and like, uh, like I'm, I'm the, the person that you should be looking at and, and, and seeing, but it's cool to, I guess, inspire other people. Um, I mean, I, I didn't grow up in New York. I grew up in East Lansing, so I didn't come to see very many Broadway shows, but I, I can only imagine seeing someone that actually was me um, be on the stage and, and to get that same feeling. So it's, I guess it's really cool to be able to be um, that for someone else. Well, I, I've heard you tell a story about a young boy who came to see the yes. show. Can you, Leo. can you share that with our audience? <laughs> yes, yes. So adorable. Absolutely. Um, it was actually my first time going on in the show at all. Uh, it was for Man 6. Um, he's an ensemble cover role, typically. Uh, it wasn't the role that I was hired for. Um, I found out that they or the the company asked if I would be able to learn it to be extra coverage. I learned it in a week, and I and I went on and <laughs> it's 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 insane. I don't know. Uh, uh, um, it's it's a simpler part, uh, uh, but uh, my mom got to see me and my sister. Uh, and do they Leo, both still live in East Lansing? Uh, my mom still lives in East Lansing. My sister just moved to Connecticut, oh, um, okay. but she was here uh, in Jersey for residency. Um, okay. She actually graduated the day before 
and I, uh, she was able to come and, and see me before she moved on to Ohio at that point. Um, uh, so it was like all, it's very serendipitous because also Leo um, was here with his mom um, uh, and family and uh, uh, they, they somehow got on, um, onto the stage after the show. Uh, this was pre-pandemic, so. Um, Cause that's not allowed Cause anymore. that's not allowed anymore, <laughs> sadly, uh, but hopefully one day soon. Um, but uh, so when I was greeting my friends and family afterwards, I saw uh, him and his mom um, kind of looking at me and like uh, her pointing in my direction. So I ended up waving and they came over and said hello. And um, he was in a full like Hamilton inspired <gasps> garb. Ah. Uh, um, and uh, Mindy uh, ended up saying to me that Leo saw me or saw my insert and and saw me on stage immediately and w they were trying to find me everywhere because when he saw my insert he said he looks like me that means I can be in this show and it was like that like broke my heart it still brings like uh, like makes me that teary makes eyes. Me cry yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely but so um, even that as like in my mind was a very small part um, uh, a small puzzle piece in the in the overall um, grand scheme of the mm -hmm. show but he saw me immediately and like uh, uh, it inspired him and like he's now working on his dance, working on his singing. He's he's aiming to be an Alexander Hamilton. And are you still uh, staying in touch with him? I am, I am. Okay. I, I, I kept in touch with so him. So we give a shout out to Leo. Yes, <laughs> Leo and Mindy. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you think Hamilton was such a good fit for you? Why did you choose that as the show that you wanted to be part of? Uh, it's it's Funny, I always say that um, what brought me to performing was um, the movie You Got Served. Uh, I saw it in high school, uh, wanted to learn how to break dance, um, and from that ended up finding a performing arts studio and then actually found my love of performing through there. So when a show comes along that's fusing hip hop and theater mashed into one, I was like, that that's me. <laughs> so that's so you saw yourself mm -hmm. in it, yes. which was which was the big thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd love to hear more about your audition process and how you got yes. cast and how you became an emergency cover for Hamilton. Yes, yes, yes. It, it was over a year and a half. My audition process was over an e a year and a half long. Wow. Um, and I think I went in a total of like 11 or 12 times. Uh, it was started from open calls. I didn't have an agent. Um, so it was like the fall of uh, 2015. I believe um, I went to an open call, got a call back, didn't hear anything after. Uh, but they every six months they always have like uh, a call. It's like an equity rule. So I went in another six months later. They told us that we that they weren't looking for anyone currently, but they were just kind of bolstering their roster. So did that audition, uh, moved on to the next time six months later uh, that they had uh, a round of of auditions for the Broadway company, mm -hmm. uh, and then two weeks later, the Angelica tour, or actually it might have been flipped or reversed. I don't remember, but it was like two, uh, two sets of auditions. Um, so I went to the first one, got a call back, and since the other one was two weeks later, I kind of had the feeling, I was like, do I do this, do I not? They've seen me. Uh, I got another call back to dance um, after that, and then they asked me to be a part of this boot camp. Mm. Um, well, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, very camp cool. To learn all about how to be in Hamilton. Yes, it was. It was like a week-long process. Uh, it was me and I think ten other people for this round. Um, we got to learn different bits of the show. Uh, I got to see the show for my f like first time. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of went a bunch. I went like three or four times because I wanted to uh, uh, immerse myself and absorb as much information. Um, and after this boot camp was like the final uh, callbacks for the Angelica tour, mm. and I went in. And I didn't get <gasps> it. <laughs> oh my God. Which is crazy. And 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 at that point, I was like, did I do something wrong? Um, I, did, did they not like me? Could I have worked harder? You know, all of that kind of like uh, um, negative self talk and like pressure on myself. Mm. Um, and I like talked to my mom and friends after because I felt really like discouraged. I was like, I put so much into it and like to not get it. Um, it was really heartbreaking. But my mom actually um, told me that I was so close that I have to keep going. Well, you know, that's an amazing thing. The first thing I was going to ask you uh, about your family was how supportive are, were they? Because generally, you know, Chinese American yeah. parents yes. don't want you to be in the arts. They want mm -hmm. you to be a doctor. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, which was, which was uh, my, my original path. Absolutely. Um, it, was really, it was really hard for my mom 
when I first told her that I was making that shift mm -hmm. because, well, I mean, I told her in high school I was interested in going to college for it. And for her, she was like, I actually bless her heart because she was, she was like, you're, you started really late. There's people that have been doing this since they were young. Like, um, I don't know if it makes the most sense, um, but she did give me a chance. Um, she said if I auditioned for this uh, um, summer program at M at for Impulse at the University of Michigan, um, if I got into that, then, then we would re reconsider. So I auditioned, mm. but I didn't get into that. Oh, so okay. it was kind of like, okay, kinesiology right. was the path. Um, but I uh, uh, did an internship at a personal training gym and a mentor of mine one day asked me if I really wanted to do medicine because uh -huh. she saw me light up working with clients. Right. And she was like, I want, make sure, I want to make sure you're doing what you want to do. And when I thought about it, I wanted to perform. So I told my mom, and at that point, it was very devastating for her. Right. She was kind of like, wait, no, what are you doing? Like, this doesn't make sense. Um, uh, but from our kind of uh, a clash at that point, it came to the, I came to the real realization, and she communicated this to me, that she just wanted to make sure that I wasn't pivoting to that because I was afraid that I would fail at being a doctor right. or, or, or the route of medicine. And when she saw how hard I was working at my training and trying to learn all of like gather as much information as possible. She like turned around then and was like, I'm going to support you. Um, uh, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens in like the next couple of years when you like try and go to New York and everything. And, and she's actually become my biggest supporter from like a moment mm. of fear and in a way of like for sure, her because sure. she wanted the best for me. Sure. Um, so you don't get into the Angelica tour I and then what happens? Uh, well, from my mom giving me that uh, pep talk, I um, I, I come back into uh, uh, auditioning and honing my craft in different ways. Um, at that point, um, uh, I, I work with this company called The Bring About, um, and that was something that was really uh, amazing for my like, creative aspect. Uh, and I did. I then, then six months later, come to an audition, another a round of auditions. But my approach to this is different. My approach to this now, instead of being like, I need to get Hamilton, I, like, I was so close before, I, I then came to the realization, like, I wanted to perform before I even knew Hamilton existed. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that was a, a thing. So I came at, at it as being, I wanted to perform, I want to express and storytell as much as I can in this moment. And I did it, and I ended up getting a call, or not not getting a call. Um, I ended up getting um, uh, hired to be in the Broadway company. I got an email, an actually, email. which is really funny. Yes. <laughs> they always say that they wait email. for the call, and it was just an email. <laughs> you got notified over email. Yeah. That you were in the Broadway. <laughs> now, you started as a swing, but then yeah. how did you end up being the cover for Alex, emergency cover for Alexander, Alexander Hamilton? Hamilton? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it, it was. Uh, through conversations through friends, actually. Um, I, it, it took me around like two years or so to learn all of my tracks. Um, at that point, it's, it's six uh, ensemble tracks that I learned. Um, and I was talking to my other swings and standbys and everything uh, during the show. And I was like, I don't know if I want to just like coast here. I kind of like want to see if I could like um, uh, cover a, a principal part or something. But I don't know if like that's something I should ask or like, is it weird? and all of my friends were like, ask. Like the worst, the worst thing they can say is no when you're in the same, same spot. Um, and it was really hard for me. I was like really uh, terrified, but I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna ask. Um, so I, I asked my stage manager um, at the time and it was just being like, <laughs> I was not very articulate, but I was like, <laughs> like so like I've learned this and, and, and I'm kind of like wanting to, to, to grow and like see if I can get more experience. And, and I was wondering if like, it's something that is okay for me to see if I can audition for or something. And, and uh, my stage manager asked me, she was like, yeah, absolutely. Like, we'll probably have to do another round of auditions. Um, it's all through the casting office again. Uh, but what role do you think you'd want to do? And at that point, I was like, probably a Lawrence Phillip. Like, I'm, it's a younger part, not like a, b a big thing. And I think I can like fit that energetically. And she was like, okay, great. I'll, I'll pass it on to them and, and let you know. Um, and I didn't hear anything for a while. So at that point I was like, oh, okay, you know, there was no, it, it, it's fine. I'll like stay and do my, uh, my, my swing job and all of that. And like, I feel like it was a month and a month and a half later that she called me into the office and she was like, so I know you were like talking about a Lawrence Phillip cover and everything. And she's like, I don't, I, she's like, I have a lot of, uh, of Lawrence Phillip covers. I don't need any more, mm -hmm. but she's, but she told me, she's like, I kind of need 
some more Hamilton covers, and I was wondering how you would feel to uh, like audition for that. And I was like blindsided. I was like, well, yes, but I, <laughs> I, I, I mean, do, uh, do you think I can do it? And, and, and at that point, she was like, well, you've been such a great um, a, a member of the company. You work so hard. Um, at that point, I was doing a lot of voiceover stuff too, and she's like, "I think you have more to offer than we're letting you, and and I think you could you you you." So be a you'd great already fit. proven yourself. I guess in a way, yeah. yeah. Well, and <laughs> yes, uh, it, it, I didn't feel it. I still don't feel it sometimes now, um, but I did. I was like, "Let me audition. I'll try." And and through it, I got uh, notes um, to like for myself. I sent in self tapes, got notes. Mm. Uh, send in another round of self tapes, and then they ended up contacting me and saying that I could, uh, that they wanted to add me to the <laughs> as coverage, which is crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. who are the other Asian American cast members in Hamilton? Um, we've had a couple uh, right now. Currently, there's me, um, Mark De La Cruz, who is um, our standby for Hamilton, as well as Burr, uh, the King, uh, Lawrence Phillip, and Lafayette Jefferson. He started off as a Man Five. Uh, who's a James Reynolds uh, uh, ensemble member, but covered those different parts. Um, and then uh, we also have Preston Mui, who is uh, our man three, George Eaker. He's on stage every night. Um, uh, and those are our current members now. But we've had Jin Ha, um, who was just our Aaron Burr. Um, Carla Garcia, who was a, a is swing. absolutely amazingly Literally. out of this world. <laughs> Literally. She is, um, she's so brilliant. Yes. So yes. Um, in August, you are starting a new job. Yes. Can you tell I us am. about that? Yes, yes, yes. I am going to be um, taking a little uh, a hiatus from, from Hamilton um, to go into K pop, the new musical. Um, uh, so, what can you share? Uh, I can share that it is an incredible cast. Um, uh, th their heart and soul and work that they put in is going to be off the charts. Mm. Um, and it is going to be at Circle in the Square. Um, and the, the premise story that I, that I think I can share is that um, it, there's a K-pop label that is renting out a Broadway house for a one-night-only concert. They have uh, a boy band, a girl band, and a solo artist, and then stories ensue. And who <laughs> do you play? Uh, I am a part of the boy band. Uh, my my uh, ca character's name is Sky. Okay. Uh, the, the boy band Fate is, is <laughs> Fate. <laughs> F8, there's eight members. There's fate, there's right, so it's kind of a fun right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, Eddie, I could talk to you all day long, <laughs> but unfortunately, we are out uh, of time. Okay. Thank you so much no, for coming you. to be on the show. I Welcome to Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Today, I'm at the Richard Rogers Amphitheater where the Classical Theater of Harlem's production of Twelfth Night is currently playing through July 29th. We're headed in to the opening night party. I'm not gonna keep you because this is a dynamic show, but I just wanna say as someone raised in this community, in this neighborhood, and seeing this park in its darker days, it is with great pleasure and honor that I attend this tonight. To see this park come back to life, to see it used in this way. You know, the culture saves us. The culture teaches us. The culture raises us. The culture heals us. And we have to preserve it. And I'm just proud to be the senator of Harlem, the most famous neighborhood in the world. neighborhood famous in the world and the, the birthplace of the Renaissance and the culture. It is only fitting that we have Ty Jones and his production. Thank you for bringing this here to our community. I look forward to the show. Please go out and vote on August 23rd. I'm not telling you who to vote for. Just go out.
Gail Brewer, and Senator Cordell Clear. Carl Coldfield, Associate Artistic Director of the Classical Theater Park, Director of this play, and our resident choreographer and Artistic Director of the Merge 125 Tiffany Williams District. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to keep it very brief. Thank you so much for being back with us. Uh, when we decided to program 12th Night, I said we need joy. We need some joy and love and let me back. So uh, it takes a lot to do this, but the secret sauce is you. We do this for you. Uh, real quick, this is for my mom, uh, this is for Marina, this is for Cassius, and this is for Langston. tell you how much it means for us to be able to share our work with you. This is my eighth production choreographing for CTH and it is a pleasure every single year. We love Harlem. I live in Harlem. I'm raising a little Harlemite right now and be a, be a, being able to be here with them and have this group of like incredible artists be able to share with our community. There's literally nothing better. So thank you, thank you, thank you. In order for us to be able to pull this off, it really does take a village. It takes political support. It takes other cultural institution support. It takes local business support, but most importantly, it takes individual support. And I really mean that. That is not just some perfunctory thing I'm saying. I'm being <laughs> That's all the time we have for today's edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. You can catch Eddie in Hamilton at the Richard Rogers Theatre until August, and then in K-pop at Circle in the Square in October. I'm your host, Leah Chang. Until next time.